All right, all right, everybody. This is Vanderlei Room. Let me get started here momentarily. Turn down the music. So welcome. Welcome to the stream. Uh, today I'm going to be working with some sidekicks. Uh, I've already built the warrior types. And now I'm going to move over to a few different types of uh, experts. So these are your rogues, you know, your expert, uh, like hackers and, you know, people that uh, provide you with uh, support. Um, a different kind of support, somewhere like mental and like figuring out puzzles and, you know, th those sort of things. So we're going to make a few different varieties. Um, we're going to mix it up with races and backgrounds. Uh, a lot of these characters, uh, they're, you know, sidekick builds, so they're not a full-on character. And these are being built based upon Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. So if you have that book for Fantasy Grounds, you want to also open the DM module because it actually has the classes for that. So if you're interested in building these, you have to have the... Uh, the main book loaded as well as the PC one for Tasha's. And what you'll find is over here on the right hand side in our classes, there's two for Tasha's. One is for players, like regular players, and then one is for actual NPC sidekick when they're actually characters, but these are your three types. Today we're focusing on the expert. And this is the rules for it. I'm only going to build a level one because I want to leave it. So if anyone uses it, they can level it up themselves. But you gain all these actions as you as you build your character. Um, I'm going to just build based off of a few criteria and skills. So whatever abilities I have and skills and race and stuff, that's going to determine kind of the expertise that they have. So the expert sidekick is going to be more or less based on their skill set and what their abilities are and what types of, you know, what types of skills we end up building. So we'll see what happens. So this one is going to be intelligence based. So when you build these things, as far as the sidekicks go, you get a bonus proficiency in which you gain proficiency with one saving throw of your choice. So in this case, this guy is, or girl, doesn't matter which one, is going to have uh, intelligence as their as their proficiency bonus. In addition, they gain proficiencies in five skills of your choice, and it gains proficiency with light armor. If it is a humanoid, or has a simple or martial weapon in the stat block, it also gains proficiency with all simple weapons with two tools of your choice. So these guys are very utility. So that's what you want from a, a sidekick is uh, a lot of utility. Um, you don't want to put them up on the front line, but they may gain something later on. They have, uh, let's see, they have coordinated strike, which is like kind of like a help action that gives you advantage. And then they have at second level, they have cunning action. Third level, they have expertise. So that's when they really start kicking in. But I'm only going to make the first level ones. And the nice thing is once you start building a series of these, you can borrow assets from other character sheet. So for instance, even though this is a warrior, he may have some things on a sheet that I can drag and drop over so I don't have to recreate them. So that's pretty handy. So anyways, I'm going to get started. So I'm going to start with the standard array. So that's 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8. And let me know if the music is drowning out my voice. I don't know if it's uh, annoying or if you can even hear it. I have it turned way down, so if it's annoying, I'll turn it off. Um, it's just a background noise. I can probably just turn that off now. That way it's not a problem. Okay. Let's see. There we go. All right, kill the music. All right, so what we have here is um, the D&D &D 5e rule set. I'm using the latest version of Fantasy Grounds Unity. 
I have the player's handbook loaded and a bunch of third-party stuff to help me build these quicker. And then I have the core books loaded, like the player's handbook, Sword Coast Adventures Guide, and Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. If you don't have those, it's difficult to build the sidekicks. Although I'm sure if you knew what you're doing in Fantasy Grounds, you can come up with your own system. But you have to know how to set up the, you know, the parameters for it. Otherwise, it won't turn out right. And then I'm on Create PC mode, which is in here, which allows me to build uh, PCs quicker without having all the buttons. So I don't get confused. The older you get, the less you can multitask. Okay, at least for me anyways. So here we go with the stat array. So this character is going to have a 15 intelligence, maybe a 14. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's going to be a high elf. And I'm pretty sure they get a plus one or plus two to intelligence. Uh, I'm going to give them a 15 dex. So there's 15, 14, uh, 13 charisma. And 8 in strength, because they don't need to be super strong. So 15, 14, now I need a 13. So I will put that in con, I guess. Actually, charisma. 12 will go in con. So there's the standard array. So that's a legal way to build a character. Now these guys aren't very tough. They actually kind of operate about a level and a half under their true level. And that's because of their, their progression's a little bit slower, their skill access is a little bit slower, and they also don't cast spells at you know quite as high as you would if you were a, a true wizard. So they kind of have that you know, subdued uh, build to them, but that kind of balances it out. And you can play these as a character in a pinch. So if you had to build the character yourself, you could, you know, you could build one of these and use them as kind of like a support character. Maybe you're going to drop in on someone's session and you don't have a full-on character. So what we're going to do is build these out. I'm going to build all three of them. And the reason I'm doing three is because I want to have some that are focused on different skill sets. So this one's going to be intelligence-based, and it's going to be an elf. So I build these kind of, stack them more in the favor of, of what they are. So I'm going to go ahead and, the next step is the background, though. So I'm going to go to backgrounds, and I'm going to drag that over to the um, background area. And this is similar to regular character creation. So this guy is more intelligence based. So I probably might make him a sage, a cloistered scholar, or an acolyte. One of those three would fit very well for this build. I think a cloistered scholar might be uh, in this. So with that, you get access to libraries. You get history plus one other um, supporting uh, skill. You get some robes, some books and such. And you have this library access, which is actually a really cool role-playing feature. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the Cloistered Scholar. So this guy doesn't come out very often, but when you hire him, he's got the research thing down. Or she. So I'll drag and drop this. Maybe I will make this a female, because the other two are males. So now I get to pick one extra skill. So I already have history. So there's Arcana, Nature, and Religion. I'm going to go with Arcana since it's intelligence-based. And those are the two you start with for this build, which is really nice. The library access is very downplayed, but if you get into a good campaign, having that access to a, a, a powerful library is a very, very important uh, aspect of role-playing and such. So if your GM is good, if he's worth his weight in salt, he'll give you an opportunity to, to uh, exploit that feature because I don't think it comes up enough in games. So the next thing is the race. And I'm going to pick an elf, and in particular, it's going to be a high elf. So when I drag elf over, 
it's going to give me a subrace selection. And I'm going with the High Elf. And they get a bonus cantrip. So even if you're not a spellcaster, he'll have something that's kind of helpful, hopefully. And that fills in all the racial stuff, so that's all done. And now what I'm going to do is close this and go to class and level. So this is where you're going to drag from that group I was telling you about earlier. So in the classes area, you have a filter up here. So I filtered it just to the Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. If you go to the player side, that's just all the regular players. You want to go to the DM side where they have these three types of sidekicks. So I'm going to drag and drop the expert over. And at this point, it's given me five skills. So you're a skill hound, kind of like a uh, bard. So you have these three already. So I have it on the skills tab. I don't want to pick those again. So I'm going to pick acrobatics for something to help him get out of a bad situation. I am going to pick um, investigation because that's the type of character this is. Uh, it already has perception, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, stealth would be a good one. And probably, I already have history, animal handling. Yeah, actually, so nature would be good. And then I have one more. So probably religion or medicine. Let's go with medicine. Yep. So those are very scholarly pursuits. And I already have Arcana, History, and Perception. So these will help him, you know, be a more of a well-rounded individual. So I go ahead and hit OK. And it will commit all those to your character. Now I gotta add a couple tools. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a little home for those here now. So I'm editing the sheet and I'm adding these two uh, lines here, and we're proficient with those. So whatever two tools we choose, that's where we're going to put those. And that's a feature that we get. So we're, we'll look at that shortly. And the next level would be 300 if you're playing a standard D&D 5e game. If not, then you don't worry about it. So there's the first level of this character. Uh, I got the skills pretty much dealt with. I might have to add a couple of the tools. And then your bonus proficiencies we already got. Um, they're helpful. So the sidekick is adept at giving well-timed assistance. The sidekick can take the help action as a bonus action. So that's cool. So if you go to the actions tab and you see if you build the help action or if you have it on your sheet, I'm going to put a little B there in capital letter with a parentheses. That's a notation. It lets you know that that, is, that can be used as a bonus action. So that's pretty helpful. <laughs> Literally helpful. <laughs> okay, so at first level, that's what they get. Uh, they, he already has Fey Ancestry on here. And there's uh, usually there's they ask for a spell, which I'm surprised. Oh, cantrip right here. So I can pick a wizard cantrip. So what I'm going to do is put that in this elf section. So I'm going to go over to the spell. And I do have the Rob Tui coding effects and an extension that adds some of this stuff automatically. And that just helps make this process a little faster. So it's like Mad Nomad's um, automatic actions tab, but you have to have, you know, almost all of Rob Tui's coding effects and the class background and equipment loaded. Uh, since these are not typical characters, that, that piece of it won't work, but the rest of it will. And then I'm going to go to level zero because that is the cantrips. And then the source, if I scroll down to the bottom, be wizard. And these are supposedly all the different um, spells for cantrips. And then I'm going to go to Rob Tui's 5e effects coding for spells. And that narrows it down. So now I get to pick 
one of these to add to my character. It's a racial ability. So I'm thinking maybe Mage Hand or maybe Friends. Something more utility than um, actual fighting. However, since this guy isn't a big, you know, fighting type, you might need to have something to protect him. So I'm kind of on the fence about that. But mending is helpful, like to fix things. Um, Firebolt might be a thing. Control flames, chill touch. There's so many good options here. A light spell, I mean, even that was pretty helpful. But I think Mage Hand will be helpful to him. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop that onto the sheet here where it says uh, Fey Ancestry because it's it's an elven, high elf ability type thing. So I'm going to take that over and drag and drop it there for Mage Hand. I think that's a helpful little cantrip. And now that it's on there, there we go. Now it says it's based on intelligence. So if you're not a spellcaster of any sort, you need to set that. And it's really not going to affect this that much here. But I'm going to go ahead and set it anyway. So in this group under Elf, I'm going to set it to Intelligence. Because if you do have any Intelligence-based spells that are affected by that spell, or maybe your base spells are Wisdom-based, but you get this one cantrip, it needs to be set to a different stat. In this case, it's intelligence. So I, I went ahead and changed that over to intelligence. So the next thing is to go back and look at these abilities and see what else. So we did the bonus proficiencies are dealt with. Um, so that's good. I already lists that we get two tools. Uh, we did the elf weapon training is something that um, you can pick that overrides your class restrictions. So under weapons, simple weapons, I'm going to put a comma. And I'm manually typing these in. So this is not automated, but I'm going to put in the swords and the bows that you're trained with. So long and short bows and long and short swords. So you're able to use those despite any um, uh, restrictions because of your racial background. So that's cool. So you can get light armor, so leather. And then if he wants to, we can probably pick one of these. I'll probably go with a short bow if I have to. Okay, and then I get two more languages, actually three. So, I'm going to pick Abyssal, actually Infernal. So, if he has to deal with the Occult, maybe I'll do Abyssal as well. You have to make sure these are spelt right. See, I left out an S. Okay, and then we get one more. So I'm thinking primordial. And make sure I spelt it right. Prime or deal. Yep. Okay, so those are really good languages to have. So he has Common, Elvish, Infernal, Primordial, and Abyssal. So when he does his research, he can, you know, do a lot with it. The other two I would probably sub is Draconic and Giant, and maybe Dwarven, because all three of those have some really good points to them. But this guy has a lot of macabre kind of information, like kind of like a cult and, you know, Sherlock Holmes type thing. He's got the... Uh, you know, that sort of training. Uh, so yes, Fey Ancestry, that's already a note here for the back. So when you add them to the combat tracker, that notation is added. Like this one has a military role attacker. The sidekick dwarf has something that you can activate too. It's a passive ability. 
Uh, let's see. And then we have our weapons. Keen senses is just a perception skill. You already have that. And then trance means that um, you you have to rest for eight hours, but you only have to sleep for four hours. So what that could entail is, yes, you can't do a whole lot um, in eight hours, but you would be awake, um, and that would be counted towards uh, keeping watch. So that would be a good thing for an elf to do is keep watch while they're resting. Because for four hours, they can actually not sleep, but just sit there. So if they're on watch and they're meditating, and then they come out of their meditative state, they cannot be surprised. So unless they're, you know, the person ambushing them is, is really skilled. But it's kind of a cool thing that, that elves have. So anyways, the uh, armor is light. We have two tools of choice, so I need to look up the tools, figure out what this guy would, would use. Uh, let's see, or girl. I think we're going to make this one female. So this this woman, is uh, elven woman, is going to be skilled in a couple tools. So I'm going to open up the item, and I'm going to see what tools are available to me right now. So I'm going to type tools. And she has library access, so I'm thinking that she would probably have artisan tools, which are just basic tools for, like, uh, you can have a single craft. So proficiency with a set of artisan tools lets you add proficiency bonus to any ability checks using the tools in your craft. Each type of artisan tools requires a separate... Um, Proficiency. So what I'm thinking is that she is going to have like a writing type thing, like a calligraphy, scribing type thing. So I'm going to put artisan tools. So she'd have scriber's tools, which is ink, paper, a little knife, you know, the little things you get like a writing kit. So that would be one of her her tools. She could put thieves tools in there, but I don't see her really being a, a pickpocket or a picklocker. Uh, the next thing would be probably navigator's tools or something along those lines, or maybe I will just give her thieves tools. Because you never know when you need to unlock something. So I'll go ahead and do that. So she takes notes like a journal. And then she also has thieves tools in case they need to break into something. So there's her decks. And the artisan scribing could be decks or charisma or intelligence or wisdom. I think um, to write well, you might have to have a little wisdom or intelligence. So it's going to be, I'm going to set that to an intelligence. It's it's explainable, so. And then the dex is obviously thieves tool. So that's her tools. I have to put those in her inventory too. So I'm going to grab the artisan tools and drop that in her inventory. And then the thieves tools. I almost grabbed tinkers tools. There we go. And being that she's more or less a rogue, I am going to grab the Rob Tui's background equipment and class bundles. This was something that uh, T and I developed. He did all the work, but I came up with the idea of, you know, needing these because it was so annoying to drag individual items over. So your background equipment was already there, and now I'm just going to pick a rogue, basically, for their stuff. You could probably pick from a bard as well. But a rogue is a lot closer, so. That gives you your leather and such. And all your equipment. So like this rapier might be a good thing. Short bow, yeah. And then a two daggers, so that's perfect for this character. Or I can give her a quarter staff and a long bow. I mean, this just depends on... So And you have a writing kit right here. So that is exactly what... Uh, it makes sense.
Okay, so now we're going to um, organize the inventory a little bit. Uh, we've already gone through the features for first level. We got our tools. So I'm going to notate those here. And this helps your uh, game master um, realize what choices you made. You want to make notations if you can. So I put a little note there that says, you know, I'm proficient with these two. That way you can tell which ones you've chose, which ones you didn't, those sort of things. I've already dealt with the elf weapon training, so we're good to go there. So library access is good. All right, so I'm going to start working on the actions tab pretty shortly here. But as you can see, the items are stacking up here uh, for consumable items, for useful things. And then your all this other stuff is ready to go. I know I have two daggers, and I have 20 arrows. A short bow is going to be two-handed, so I set that to two. And then we're ready to rock. So that's uh, almost done here on the back. And then the inventory is what's going to take the most time to set up. But luckily, I have this handy dandy parcels thing. So that helped a lot. Okay, so we have a backpack and a quiver. So I'm going to type quiver next to the arrows on the location line. Notice it's a capital Q, just like the container, so I don't want to put a lowercase one in there. Uh, the artisan tools are, will be in the backpack, but first, I have to delete the space and the empty and the um, parentheses around that first. Now I can type backpack next to everything I want to store in there. So I'm going to go down the list and systematically add things, or if I want to put it in the pouch, I'll put pouch wherever I want to store it. Um, you don't put uh, anything in your... Uh, weapons and armor do not go in your backpack. Those should be armed, um, and you should also have ammunition in your inventory. Those can be stowed away. They're not. It's not going to hurt anything. But you want to have your equipment, like your, you know, all your stuff. And she has two sets of thieves' tools. So that's because I drug one over without realizing that she's going to have those. So. I'm going to delete one of those entries and just put two here. So now she's got two sets. Uh, let's see, string. And all I'm doing is systematically adding things to the container that I want to store it in. She's got a couple oil flasks, some pythons for nailing into walls and such in case you got to climb. She's got her scholar's robes. So she usually wears those when she's in the library. Okay. So everything's organized, the dagger, leather armor, and the rapier and the short bow are not inside of anything, and they are equipped. And if you don't have them equipped, they won't show up here. Uh, the leather armor is reflected in your AC, so I have a plus three for dex. And when I open up my combat calculator, it's showing that I have my leather armor on, so... Um, sometimes I give them studded leather when it, you know, if it, if needed, but this, this particular build, I think leather is fine. 
if I have another type of expert, I might give them uh, something that's a little bit more martial, like something that that depends on dexterity more. I think I'll give them potentially uh, studded. With that, won't give them a, a penalty, and it gives them one extra point of armor. But there's the languages. The proficiencies are done. Inventory is organized. The only thing I'm going to work on now, I think, is the items. So I'm going to add a couple things here. So we have ball bearings, crowbar, lantern, and oil with 20 usages. It's actually only two. Um, then there is going to be candle. And there is some water. And then there is some food. So this is some other things I can keep track of. It's more of a convenience thing. These don't tie in directly with the inventory, but they make a handy way to use the items and to keep track of them. So I'm going to put my, uh, let's see, rations. water skin, and candles. So I have my light sources dealt with. I'm not sure, the hooded uh, lantern, the way it's set up is it gives you the, if you equip it basically, or if you activate it, it puts a note on your character so that you understand your light source more and such. That's if you don't have a uh, dark vision. All right, so let's uh, take a look at these. So I'm going to switch modes now. So I'm going to get out of the edit mode, and I'm in standard mode right now, so I'm going to switch it over to preparation. So the candles are one-time use. So you set these, all these things that are one-time use, like the ball bearings, you're probably not going to get all those back. Uh, the oil, the rations, and the water skin. So all those are set to once. So he's got five candles. Does he have a water skin? I didn't, yeah, water or she water skin, rations, candles. So that this is what I'm looking at here. So the the ball bearing. Even though there's more than one bearing, it's one use basically. The crowbar. You leave that because you can use that again and again. The hooded lantern, you probably leave that, because that, that's again and again. Um, it probably, it has a six-hour duration. That's probably why they set it. Okay, and then the uh, oil. Use, there's two there. I don't need to denote that, because it'll be denoted over here. Five candles. Five days worth of food and a full water skin. So th those are items that you can track. Now, when you switch this over to combat and the display as action, anything that has a button next to it is something you can interact with. And all these other ones are bubbles so that you can check them off as you use them. And they even have the cast already to go. So if you know if if you have a situation where you need to use these then that would be where you would access the action like a crowbar can give you advantage on a strength check to open up a door or a chest or something a hooded lantern is just a note your oil can actually be thrown as a fire tool if you had torches they would have their own little thing too so there's ways to kind of uh you know, make these a little bit more useful. So that's not really in a standard build. That's more something that you would use when you were, uh, you know, customizing your character. You don't have to add all this stuff. All the stuff I'm doing now is just to make the character more complete. So that is the expert sidekick. And this one is Elvin. And she is intelligence based.
level one. I am going to assign her a portrait. So here is the portrait, and I'm going to use the new Fantasy Grounds fantasy one. If you didn't know that the uh, Fantasy Grounds actually has a brand new uh, set of artwork. So if you go to the regular Fantasy Grounds artwork, it's the old stuff. But if you go to FG Fantasy, it's the newer um, artwork that's included with the base program. So as you can see, I got a ton of different pictures. So uh, that's a fairy. Kind of want an uh, elven female. There we go. Let's just put her on the mix. There we go. So expert sidekick, Elven. She's intelligence based. And the only thing left really is to do this. So I'm going to make her probably lawful neutral. I'm going to leave the gender just in case someone wants to change that. Did I? Well, I'm going to see what I did with the other characters. Yeah, I just put a rough age. I didn't put their gender. So the age on this one, she's going to look like she's about maybe close to 30. So I'll put 30 there roughly. Uh, these personality traits, I'll go ahead and fill these out for convenience based off her background. So if you open up the, the background, the actual one that you chose, and you scroll down towards the bottom, it tells you, you know, some of your background stuff, your equipment, your library access, you know, it tells you your starting gold. Uh, but there's tables on the very bottom. So these are related to her profession. So she's like a librarian slash adventure kind of thing. So let's see. I'm going to go to her notes tab, and I get two of these. So let's roll. So. I'm convinced that people are always trying to steal my secrets. I like it. Now let's roll the next one. I'm horribly, horribly awkward in social situations. That makes sense. Because she spends a lot of time in the libraries. So she's just one of those nerdy types that doesn't get out much. So she's kind of awkward when she's dealing with people. Okay, one of her ideals is beauty. What is beautiful points used beyond itself toward what is true? Okay, so she's a little bit vain. She's into vanity. But I think logic is more her thing, so I don't want to. I want to ruin that uh, that feeling. So I'm just going to pick this right off the list that of rolling. So that fits with her her background more. And like I said, the, these sidekicks are all going to be no, no nonsense. Not going to be a lot of you know awkward variation. It's my duty to protect my students. I have ancient text that holds a terrible secret. Yeah, I like that. I work to preserve a library, university, scriptorium, or monastery. I'll take that. I sold my soul for knowledge. I hope to do great deeds and win it back. <laughs> that would be good if you were like a warlock or sorcerer or something. Okay, so that's uh, basically all I'm going to put back there. I think that's good enough. I'm going to let... Others decide what they want to do with that. Uh, there's logs here. There's actions. So this uh, sidekick's ready to go. So I'm going to, in private or away from the stream, I'm going to build the other two. But it's going to be the same process. I'm going to use this as a template. And if I can steal any of these actions that need to be added to the other character, I will. So I don't have to recreate anything. It'll go a lot faster. 
So that is basically a sidekick that's been, uh, you know, purchased from or built from Tasha's cauldron and everything. Like I said, you have to build from the classes from Tasha's cauldron and everything, the DM side of it. If you don't have the DM uh, book opened, these won't show up. The only thing that will show up is it's the regular player ones. So if you want to build the sidekicks, you have to have the Game Master book loaded. So those are my three characters. So um, what I do sometimes is I'll put them on the combat tracker, and I might test them out a little bit. Uh, for, for example, she has, on her actions tab, she should have her mage or her fey ancestry on. And the dwarf, the sidekick dwarf, should probably have, let's see, dwarven resilience on. And this defender thing, he already has that on. No, he doesn't. So he has some effects on him now. Well, that's situational, so he doesn't really need to have that on. But anyhow, those are the what what these turned out like. A little different. Um, they're lower hit points, so you got to remember that. And uh, there we go. So hopefully that helps you with sidekicks. That's just one of you know a dozen or a handful that you can make. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask. So I'm going to call it a stream. I think I've been going for almost an hour. It's been 40 minutes or so. So unless you have any questions, uh, I will call it a day. I'll just wait a couple minutes, and whatever it is that you need, uh, come over to the Fantasy Grounds College. Our join code is in the description. Um, I also have some other information in the video description, so once this is live, which will be shortly, um, you will be able to see that. Um, again, um, next month we are recruiting. So in January, we're going to be recruiting for more faculty members. Uh, we have Traveler 2 coming up for a whole month.